Hi everyone, my name is Patrick and I am a product manager at SAP. Today I will be showing you how to use SAP process automation focusing on what process builder is and how you can build your own processes in minutes. I will be publishing a series of beginner friendly tutorials here so make sure to hit the subscribe button below so you do not miss out when a new video comes out. Before we begin, let me quickly introduce what SAP Process Automation is. SAP Process Automation is a simpler, faster way to enhance business efficiency and agility with confidence. It combines workflow management, robotic process automation and AI services with visual tools that require no coding expertise. So what is a process builder? With Process Builder, you can easily design a process using drag and drop features and assign the relevant artifacts and logic to it. With Workflow, we will leverage our multi-year experience and future-proofed capability to run processes in an SAP system. Let us first have a look into the business scenario we want to automate today. Imagine, I work for a company called ACME. My company has a policy that all employees can order IT equipment under $200 without any approvals needed. However, every time we want to order equipment, for example a mouse, we still need to take multiple manual steps such as filling out a form, confirming this purchase via email to all stakeholders involved. Sounds time consuming, doesn't it? My job to be done as a citizen developer is to automate this paper and email based process of enabling our employees to order IT equipment, automatically create a purchase requisition and provide an order confirmation to the requester. Alright, I can't wait to code with no code. Let's go! Okay, so I'm already logged on into SAP Process Automation and we are currently in the lobby. As you can see in this quick start section right here we have several options. In our tutorial, we want to create a new process. Therefore, I choose this button here, create a process. Then I am firstly asked to create a new business process project to assign this process. As we haven't not yet defined any business process project, we will create a new one. For our further tutorials, we will reuse the existing to business process project. So let us define a project name, for example, YouTube tutorials. And we can also enter a description right here, but as of now, we leave it empty. We choose create to create this new business process project. And we will get then forwarded to define our process within this business process project. Here's the pop-up. So let us define the process. Since we are focusing now on the process builder, let's call this YouTube process builder tutorial. And as you can also see, the identifier gets also automatically filled by already by the system. Also here, we have the chance to enter the description, leave it empty and choose create. Now we are already in the process builder right here. Um, this is a visual presentation of the process and it's easy to maintain and we can also have directly indication what's currently missing. So let us check this. Here it's called select the start trigger. I choose to select the start trigger. This is basically um, a form which we now would like to create in order to enable our employees to create uh, a new purchase requisition or at least to create a new purchase requisition to order a mouse. So we choose right here forms, choose new form and we enter right here, um, for example, order form. Identify gets also pre-filled automatically, choose create. and the error is gone. Certainly, we also now need to enter the relevant details into this form. Therefore, let us save this process as of now and let's go back to the overview right here. Here within the overview, you can also see that the order form is already created. So I choose order form right here and new tab opens and with an easy to use and visual drop, drag and drop functionality, I can now create a new form. So let us define a headline, for example, order your IT equipment and let's use a paragraph for example um, order details. Next we want to enable a text field and I name this field purchase requisition name. 
This is a required field, so I will also choose the field right here. Next, we would like to provide our users the chance to insert a material. Therefore, we use this drop down functionality right here. Call this material and we provide several options. For example, ordering a mouse or a keyboard, for example. I hit enter and it's also an required field. Next, certainly it's needful to have the quantity. Therefore, let's drag and drop a new field, which is called quantity. And please also consider that the inputs right here have different um, types. So for example, we have here a text type and we have a drop down, a checkbox, number of course for the quantity and also a date. Next, we use the date for to say, okay, what is your desired delivery date? This is certainly also required field. I missed the quantity as required field. Let us scroll down a little bit because now we have also a next paragraph, which is for the organizational data. So to structure this a little bit better, I insert this new paragraph and I say organizational data. Now we want to provide also here a drop down functionality for our user to enter the purchasing organization. This is a required field as well. Then we choose another drop down field for the purchasing group. Right. And as both are a drop down field, we certainly also need to enter an option right here. So let's say this is 0, 01 and this one is also 0, 02 as an option. And same for purchasing group. Another option. All right. Then finally, we have one more drop down field which we want to provide, and this is the plant. Let's also use. For example, 1710 and another option 1720. All right, so we are now finished with this form right here, with this order form. So we say save, and you can also see that the asterisk will go once it's saved. And now it's saved. I will close this tab and I will go back to the process builder. All right, next I want to assign my action to the order form which we have created right here. And more specifically, the action is for the purchase requisition in the connected S4 HANA cloud system. Therefore, I choose this plus icon right here, click on actions, click on browse library and search for the purchase action right here. And now we assign the purchase requisition action. We also set this environment variable as set to the connected S4 HANA cloud system. And we say also right here, uh, the relevant input mapping. So we define this delivery date and the description we use also from the order form. We choose the material. So also out from the order form, we have the plant from the order form and the quantity as well. All right, as a next step, and if the purchase requisition was created successfully, we also would like to inform the requester that this purchase requisition was created successfully. Therefore, we choose this plus icon right here, and we say forms, and we don't want to choose the order form, we want to create a new form, and let's call this success. Fully created. We choose the create button. So we are also can see now that there are some issues right here. Let's fix this. So the subject is then what's actually sent to the my inbox of the requester. So let's define a subject, the requester. Here is your approval. As a recipient, we also choose the field right here and within the process metadata chapter we can say okay please send this form to the person who started this process in addition to that we certainly have to maintain the relevant form so we can also choose right here open editor and set this headline for example purchase 
requisition successfully created. We set a paragraph. Uh, we can also name this again, for example, purchasing data. Then we have a text field right here, and we call this also here purchase requisition name. And since this data will come from the connected purchase requisition, we say, okay, this is a read only because this was already pre-filled or will be filled by the purchase requisition. Next, we also have the material. So this is a text field. And we say material, it's also read only. Next, we have the quantity, which was basically the number. Then we have also a read only field. And we can also add an additional paragraph with some details from the purchase requisition from the connected S4 ANA cloud system. And in this case, we say, okay, we would like also to know what's the purchase requisition ID. Therefore, let's also drag and drop the input type text right here and say this is the purchase requisition ID. And it's also read only field because it's already maintained and filled by the connected purchase requisition. Finally, we would like to hint our user to say if everything is okay, please choose the submit button to finalize the process. All right, this form looks great. Same as last time, we say save right here. Asterisk is gone. It's successfully created form is saved and we go back to our overview right here, to our process builder. Here we can also see now that we have still some issues in this form. So let us choose the form and we can also see that the inputs need to be mapped here as well. Say material. And we do simply the input mapping of the relevant fields. Yeah, the quantity as well. And the purchase requisition ID does not come from the order form, which we have chosen before, but from this purchase requisition right here. Finally, we save our process. All right, now all issues are gone. Uh, let's do a quick test of our process right here. Therefore, we have to release our process. Version number 100, it's fine. We can also leave a version comment right here. We leave this empty as of now. We say release. And this is pretty straightforward as you can see. And the testing also works pretty fast. So we also now in the status released, we also want to deploy it now. This is fine, we want no trigger, but the destination right here is our connected S4 HANA cloud. And we say confirm and deploy. All right, our process is now deployed. Let's do a test. To test it, we have to go to the process builder overview again. We choose the form right here. And here we have a form link. Let's copy it. I will open a new tab and insert this link. And if everything was set up correctly, we will now see the form which we have defined before. So let's say we have the purchase requisition name. It's uh, mouse YouTube tutorial. Material is of course the mouse. We only want one. Desired delivery date is for example, somewhere in the future. Let's say the 29th of April. We have the purchasing organization. So as you can see, a drop-down functionality works pretty straightforward. We also have the plant and we assign this accordingly and we say submit and that's it. Request form order form is submitted, which is perfect. So let's go back to the process overview right here. So the purchase requisition is now automatically created in the S4 HANA cloud system. And if it's successfully created, I also get the information in my inbox that the purchase requisition was created successfully and um, the mouse will be delivered to my workplace soon. 
to open my inbox, I will go back to the lobby and choose this icon right here, my inbox. All right, perfect. As you can see, um, this is also the subject we have defined, the requester, here's your approval. And this is basically the information we wanted to have. Um, this is the second form we have created for the successful creation.